Welcome back. This is section 19.5 of Chemistry, the Central Science. We're on Gibbs free energy today. A lot of people think of this as like, oh, this is where I died in chemistry. I just think of it a little bit easier. If I, th if, if I think of free energy, I'm thinking that the universe tends towards reactions that release tons of energy. Okay, that's normal. They want to blow up. They don't want to come together and make something more, uh, more orderly. They want to jumble. So they will either tend towards dumping lots of energy and having a huge exothermic reaction. That's normal. That's, that would happen automatically. Or they will become more and more chaotic. They'll have more entropy. So remember, there's two terms that we've been looking at in this chapter. Enthalpy, which is your, uh, let's say your products have much lower energy than your reactants, then you have an exothermic reaction, and then your enthalpy is the difference in those energies. The, diff the energy of the bonds at the, at the end minus the, uh, the bonds at the beginning, and if you have lower, then the energy had to go away. That's exothermic. So that enthalpy is negative, when enthalpy is hugely negative, that's always spontaneous, almost all the time. Uh, the other one that's usually spontaneous is when something becomes more random or disordered. So solids like to react into liquids or gases because they're more, react, uh, more reactive. Um, I've put two solids in a test tube and they instantly just turn into a liquid um, and then boiled. So it's, it just is a spontaneous reaction Often, uh, chemical reactions tend towards maximum entropy and maximum um, change in enthalpy to where it's dumping energy, okay? We've seen uh, that enthalpy is H and that uh, entropy is S. So we're going to have in this situation um, a chemist called Gibbs, um, his name was, I think, Josiah. Josiah Gibbs, I believe. Um, in any case, he, he simply said, well, let's put it together. Let's say, if I want to guess whether something is spontaneous or not, it must be a combination between the enthalpy of the system and the entropy of the system. And so we end up with a, I'd say, rather simple idea that the energy, the spontaneity or the guess that you can make of something is spontaneous which is named after this guy, big capital G, is simply going to be the enthalpy or the internal energy difference of a system minus uh, the temperature, Kelvin temperature, times the entropy of a system. And if you have a hugely negative number or even a negative number, it's going to happen automatically. If your Gibbs number, if your free energy number is negative, okay, so when, when G is negative, then it's spontaneous, okay? If G is positive, then it's going to be spontaneous in the opposite direction, okay? So it's, just, it's very much like if you, if you have a movie of water going over a waterfall and you can tell that as it goes over the waterfall, it's spontaneous, but if you were to run the movie backwards, it's not spontaneous, so if it's spontaneous, you'll end up with a G that is negative. Well, that means that the opposite, the opposite chemical reaction, the reverse reaction, is going to be positive, and it won't be spontaneous. You can make a guess that if you have a chemical reaction that has a negative G, a negative free energy, and it happens spontaneously, then the reverse reaction is not going to happen spontaneously. So, for instance, batteries will tend to die they don't tend to charge themselves. You have to actually put energy, if you want a rechargeable battery, you have to put energy into it to force the electrons the other way that they're not wanting to go. You have to add energy to do it. So um, in terms of, terms of practicality, usability, you're looking for a G negative, and you're essentially saying that if the enthalpy minus the temperature times the entropy Okay, is uh, together is negative, 
then you're looking for a spontaneous reaction. Okay. You're also going to say that sometimes the temperature is going to be constant. Okay. And in the case of temperature being constant, uh, it just becomes even easier. The change in the Gibbs free energy is simply going to be, I say simply as though this is simple, the change in entropy or enthalpy minus the change in entropy. And then if you want standard uh, states, you simply add them together. So this is a review. If free energy is negative, the forward reaction is spontaneous. If the free energy is zero, then the, equi then the system is at equilibrium. That is really important. Do you see it? Because it's not going to go forward or negative or, or backwards. It's going to be at equilibrium to each other. And if it's positive, then it's spontaneous in the reverse reaction. Okay. So uh, let's let's add uh, just the idea that if you want uh, if you want the change in in, in uh, Gibbs free energy, you're simply going to take. Uh, the Gibbs free energy of the products minus the Gibbs free energy of the reactants, just like you've done in other uh, other lessons. Okay, so you can find that. And normally, we're going to do that as a at a standard temperature and pressure. So, pretty easy math wise. Um, a lot of people think this is hard. I think it's hard. But the actual kind of under con concept is not that big a deal. I think you, you can get this pretty well.